Being ambitious is one of the most noble and lofty qualities a believer can possess. And the rank and status of the slave elevates and goes up and higher in the scale of Allah Azza wa Jal according to his ambition and the objectives and goals he strives to achieve. Allah Azza wa Jal called his slaves to be ambitious by encouraging them to hasten and compete in righteousness and virtue. Allah says in the Quran, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاءُ وَالْأَرْضُ أُعِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ And hasten to, give to forgiveness from your Lord and a paradise as wide as the heavens and earth prepared for the righteous. And in another verse, وَسَابِقُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ And compete to the forgiveness of your Lord. The Prophet ﷺ was the most ambitious. عليه الصلاة والسلام during all times, but particularly so during Ramadan and specifically during the last 10 days of Ramadan. According to the narration reported by Muslim on the authority of our mother, Aisha bintu Abi Bakrin radiallahu anha wa an abiha, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would strive harder during these last ten nights or ten days more than any of the days of Ramadan. <clears throat> and he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would train the Muslim community and cultivate his household on this. Al-Bukhari and Muslim report on the authority of Aisha. That the Prophet ﷺ would do the following. This was his practice during the last 10 nights or 10 days of Ramadan. She said whenever these last 10 would start, he ﷺ would stay up all night and strive hard in worship. And he would stay away from his wives so he can focus on his worship. And would wake his household up so they can themselves strive in virtue and worship. During these ten blessed nights, there is one important night. All of us know. Laylatul Qadr. The worship of which is better, not equal, better than 83 years and few months. Laylatul Qadri khayrun min alfi shahr. The night of Al Qadr is better than a thousand months. So if someone was to worship Allah for 83 years and few months, and one would coincide in his worship that night of Al-Qadr, then that one night for that one person is better than 83 years and few months, which do not include Laylatul Qadr. Who the one who stays up in Qiyam, is entitled, according to the narration in Al-Bukhari and Muslim, to forgiveness of all previous sins. The Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ قَامَ لَيْلَةَ الْقَدْرِ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ Whoever stands up in Qiyam during the night of Al-Qadr, out of hope in belief and hope in the reward 
all his previous sins will be forgiven. Which one of these ten, ten nights is Laylatul Qadr? Unknown, undefined. So people would work and strive during the entire period. If someone was to come up to you and give you, and give you ten keys, and say one of these keys will open a treasure that's endless of gold and precious jewels and money and, 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 and. Only one of these ten. Would you risk and gamble by trying to guess which one of these ten is the key that will open that treasure? Or would you take them all? Of course you'll take them all because you'll be certain then that one of them is going to open that door. So why is it that when it comes to Jannah, we try to guess and select one of the keys or maybe two? Why not strive during the entire period of these last ten nights? So that we'll be positively sure that we've coincided with that Laylatul Qadr. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught Aisha, this is reported by Imam Ahmad in his Musnad, classified as authentic by Al-Albani. She asked him, what if I happen to know which one of the nights is the night of Al-Qadr? What should I ask Allah Azza wa Jal? He said, say, Allahumma inna ka'afoon kareemun tuhibbu al-afwa fa'afu anni. Oh Allah, you are most forgiving. Noble, love to pardon, so pardon me. These last ten nights, brothers and sisters, is a golden opportunity to turn to Allah Azza wa Jal in, repen in repentance. It's a golden opportunity to reset our record of bad deeds to zero. Allah Azza wa Jal encourages his slaves to repent, sincerely repent to him. In the Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal, after mentioning the consequence and punishment of shirk and some of the major grave sins, the kabair, like killing and committing adultery, he said, Except this punishment is applicable to those except who's exempted from this punishment, O oh Allah. He who repents to Allah Azza wa Jal. Man taba, believes, wa amana, and acts righteously, wa amila amalan saliha. What happens to these people? Are they forgiven? <clears throat> no, not only forgiven. Fa'ulaika, those, yubaddilu Allahu sayyatihim hasanat, Allahu Akbar. Allah will turn their good, their bad deeds into good deeds. Not only forgiven and pardoned. No, bad deeds, evil deeds will be replaced with good deeds. That's an excellent deal. What a bargain that is. But that is conditioned to repentance being sincere and correct. And one of the conditions of sincere and correct and sound repentance is that a person is firm on that repentance and it's not temporary. So those who, who want to repent in Ramadan and then with the first day of Eid light up their cigarette for example that's not going to be counted. Because you did not fulfill the conditions of accepted repentance. Those sisters who come 
and are keen on covering up when they go to pray taraweeh and qiyam. And with the first day, in the first visit to anyone, they adorn themselves, apply makeup and perfume and expose their hair and arms and feet and so on. That's not going to be counted because that lacks the conditions of accepting repentance. We ask Allah Azza wa to purify our hearts and enable us to repent to Him sincerely. أقول ما تسمعون وأستغفر الله لي ولكم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد رمضان is almost over so let's be smart let's take advantage of what's left in it let's protect ourselves from being included in the following hadith. In the book of Imam Ahmad in his Musnad and classified as authentic by Al-Albani, <clears throat> Jabir ibn Abdullah said the Prophet وسلم, started to ascend the mimbar. His mimbar was three steps. So after he took the first step, he said, Ameen. After the second one, he said, Ameen. And after the third one, he said, Ameen. So, later the companions came to him and said, O Prophet of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we saw you and heard you say such and such. What was going on? He said, Jibreel came to me. Jibreel? came to me and he said, Indeed, may Allah make him a miserable slave. He who enters Ramadan and leaves Ramadan without being forgiven. The one who loses this opportunity is supplicated against to be miserable. And in another narration, may Allah humiliate him. And in a third narration, may Allah keep him far from his mercy. That's serious. Only one of them is serious. What if all three collectively are against one of us? That's very dangerous and serious. That's very dangerous and serious. Don't say only a few days left in Ramadan and only a few nights left in the last 10 nights. What's there to do? The Prophet ﷺ encouraged the companions to continue to act to the last moment. Listen to this amazing narration. That is reported by Ahmed in his Musnad and classified as authentic by Al Albani. Listen attentively. The Prophet ﷺ said, If one of you was holding a bud or a shoot in his hand, and the Qiyamah takes place, وقامت الساعة, if he can Plant it, then let him do so. Tell me what is expected out of this? Nothing but to raise people's ambition. To make them have this in them. That until the last second or split of, of a second in my life, I will continue to do righteous deeds, productive deeds. I'm a productive element in my community until the last split of my life. So don't say it's too late. I neglected 25 nights or 20, 26 nights and what's left? Four nights? Yes, because you don't know if Laylatul Qadr is going to be one of them. 
And even if you missed out on Laylatul Qadr, don't, don't miss out on the forgiveness of Allah Azza wa Jal. If we don't repent in Ramadan, if we don't strive hard to please Allah during Ramadan, then when? Let us work hard before that moment that cannot be avoided regardless of what we do. Before that moment comes when regret is of no avail. حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءَ أَحَدَهُمُ الْمَوْتِ قَالَ رَبِّ ارْجِعُونَ لَعَلِّي أَعْمَلُ لَعَلِّي أَعْمَلُ صَالِحًا فِي مَا تَرَكْتِ Until death comes to one of them, he will say, oh Allah, take me back. Too late. There is no turning back when that happens. It's a one way door. You exit, you can't go back. Take me back so that I can do righteousness in that which I neglected and left behind. Too late. One of the Salaf. Dug a hole in his backyard and would go down in it at night, lie down and recite this verse and then go out of that hole and say, so now you're back, so prove yourself. You want to go back? It's as if he's telling himself, okay, so you were in the grave. You claim that if you go back, you'll do righteousness. You'll repent. You'll turn to Allah. You'll please Allah. You'll stay away from the prohibitions of Allah, from the wrath of Allah, from the anger of Allah, from the punishment of Allah. Well, you have the chance now. Do it. Before you can't. Allah maghfir lana. اللهم طهر قلوبنا اللهم اعتقنا من النار اللهم اعتقنا من النار